Good morning, and uh, thank you once again for joining me for another daily word of encouragement as we begin our Thursday, and uh, as we look at the Word of God, and as we look at the principles that we find here in the book of James. We're going to continue where we left off yesterday, and that's on the subject of the tongue, and uh, we're going to look at verse number 5 uh, down to verse number 12 as we continue in this subject. The Bible says in verse number 5, Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things, Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison." Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, uh, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Uh, as we think about the teaching here in James chapter number three, James continues uh, with these illustrations. Yesterday, we learned about the first two illustrations that, uh, that demonstrated for us the power of the tongue. We thought about the, the bit, the small metal rod that controls the entire horse. And then we also spoke about the small helm, the rudder that controls the entire ship. And we learned about the power of the tongue. Uh, here, as James continues, he, he dovetails off of that subject, the power of the tongue, and he teaches, first of all, concerning the harmfulness of the tongue, and he uses two illustrations. He speaks about the fire, and he speaks about poison, and then he continues into the hypocrisy of the tongue, and he uses the last two illustrations, which is the illustration uh, of the fountain or the springs of water, and then also the illustration of of trees. And so first of all, he teaches us concerning the harmfulness or the destruction of the tongue. And the primary illustration here is, is about fire. He begins here uh, as we read in verse number six, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. And as we think about fire, uh, we would understand that, that every fire begins with a small little spark. Uh, now, as we think about a small little spark, we, we don't think much about that. We don't look at a spark and, and uh, think about the destruction that that spark is going to bring. But all of us would understand here this morning that every fire begins with a spark. Uh, that spark can grow into uh, a campfire. It can grow into a forest fire. It can grow into a, co a conflagration. It, it can grow into a massive destructive fire that begins with just a small little spark. Uh, I think about the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. After a few days, once the fire had burned out, uh, they said about one-third square miles of the city of Chicago was uh, burned and destroyed. Uh, on top of that, it was about $200 million worth of property at that time, which would equal to about uh, several billion dollars, four or five billion dollars today. Uh, there was about 100,000 homes that were lost and over 300 lives were lost and destroyed during that time. And as we think about the Great Chicago Fire, uh, many people have said that it started in a barn and it started with a cow that kicked over a lantern and, and that's how this Chicago Fire began. Now, we don't know if that's true and I don't think we'll ever know for certain exactly how it began, but we do know one thing for sure and that is the Great Chicago Fire at some point began with just a small little spark. Uh, and that spark grew and it ended up destroying a large part of the city of Chicago. And likewise, we must understand here this morning the harmfulness of our words. We might think, well, it's just a, a few words in gossip. 
Uh, it's just a few words of, of slander or, or, or a lie here and there, and, and that's not going to do that much damage, but, but just like a fire that can grow, and eventually it can, it can hurt lives, it can cause uh, destruction, it can, it can cause a world of iniquity according to the Bible. And so we find here, first of all, the illustration concerning the harmfulness of the tongue, the fire, and then, of course, the poison as well that can be destructive in a person's life. And then we find the hypocrisy of the tongue and the two illustrations here concerning the fountain, the springs of water, and then also the tree. And uh, James says here, can there be sweet water and bitter water coming out of the same fountain? Uh, that's impossible for it to take place. And then also, can there be salt water and fresh water? And, and we know the answers to these rhetorical questions. The answer is no. Uh, he says also, can there be a fig tree that uh, bears olives? Can there be an olive tree that bears figs? And, and of course, once again, the answer is no. And the principle that James is teaching here is that, is that there's, there's the hypocrisy of the tongue in that one cannot be spiritual when their words are carnal. Uh, our words will eventually manifest and display what is actually happening within our hearts. Uh, we find the New Testament principle that, that we read in the Bible, and it teaches us from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so if there's an inconsistency in our words, uh, if we're using words at one point to, to bless God and to say pious words and to use words to worship the Lord, but then we turn around and, and we use the same mouth and our same tongue to use words that are disparaging and, and uh, we speak curse words and, and we're gossiping about other people, God is saying that that ought not to be so. Uh, that's not natural for there to be this duplicity when it comes to the tongue. If that's taking place, then then the answer to that or, or the reason behind that is because there is a carnal heart. And therefore, the principle that James is teaching us here is if our words are inconsistent, then the problem is the heart. If the fruits are rotten, then we must examine the root and we must examine the heart. Are we being spirit-filled? Uh, are we being led by the Spirit of God or are we giving in to the influences of our flesh? And so there cannot be carnal words that are constantly coming out of our mouth, and then we are professing and proclaiming that we're spiritual on the inside. That cannot be. Uh, carnality on the inside will bring forth carnal words. Spirituality on, on the inside, maturity, will bring forth spiritual words as well. Now, none of us are perfect, of course, and, uh, and we'll make our mistakes from time to time. But generally speaking, if we're constantly having this duplicity where we're blessing God one moment and then we're, we're, we're cursing men the other moment, then there's a problem with the heart. And, and, and I want to encourage you as we conclude this devotion here this morning that, that once again you would pray a prayer that we find in the book of Psalms and uh, we find it in Psalms chapter 19, uh, verse number 14. It is a prayer of David, and I want to read that for you. The Bible says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And that ought to be our prayer every single day. Lord, uh, let the words of my mouth be pure. Uh, let it be words that edifies, that encourages and brings glory and honor to my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And let the meditation of my heart be pure. Uh, let the meditation, the ruminations of my heart and my mind be according to the word of God. Let me be inundated with the principles that we find in the scriptures. Let me walk in the spirit and, and, and let the words that come out, that proceed out of my mouth, be words that bring glory and honor to my Savior. And so I pray this morning that that would be your desire. I pray that would be uh, your prayer every single day as we think about the words that we would use and how we would employ the instrument of the tongue that God has given us here this morning. I pray something was a challenge and an encouragement to you today. I pray you have a wonderful day in the Lord. God bless you.